With Marinus Dijkhausen joining Brentford as new head coach, we thought what best way to find out information about our new head coach but to head over to Holland to Excelsior in Rotterdam to speak to the fans of the team that he used to coach over there. So we're going to speak to the Excelsior fans about Marinus Dijkhausen. So really exciting news on the manager front at the moment now. We've had to go abroad. We've gone across to Holland to find our new manager. Who knows anything about Dutch football? Not a lot of us. So we thought, let's go straight to the horse's mouth. We found the boys over in Holland who can give us the exact information. I'm now speaking to Renzo Kennepol. He lives in Bersinuk near Rotterdam. He's a massive, massive Excelsior fan. Goes and sees them home and away for most games. Renzo, how are you doing? I'm good, thanks. That's good, man. Good, good for you to come and chat to us. You come into the Brentford family here now. Brentford oh, and gosh. Excelsior have obviously got a little vibe going on between them. But listen, Excelsior... Most Brentford yeah. fans had no idea about this club. Tell us a little bit about your club. <laughs> well, I understand that no one knows about it because it's uh, really small. But the first thing that comes in my mind when I talk about Excelsior is it's uh, warm, familiar. Everyone knows everyone. All fans go along. And even for uh, Erevisi, it's a really small club. A way they, they, I think it's about 100 people go. In the stadium, there's only place for it. 3,600 people, so that's also not really much. Do you sell out every, do you sell out every game then? Because you only get 3,600 every match. Well, this, this season uh, we, we sold out a lot of times, actually, and they are thinking about make it bigger, the stadium. I mean, you're, you're in, a, in a strange way, you're very similar to Brentford, because Brentford are a small club within London. There's lots of big clubs like Arsenal, there's yes. Tottenham, we there's have Chelsea. Feyenoord. We have Feyenoord near us. And Sparta. Yes, well, Sparta is our rival. I heard, and, and you and you actually kept them, so they came down into the division below you, and you managed to go up the division, yes. so that must have been a big victory for you. Of course, of course, that's the best thing about uh, being an Excelsior fan now, like better than Sparta. <laughs> okay, I could imagine that. So let's let's come to the, the, the manager situation now. Were you really surprised that Marinus Dijkhausen left you to come to Brentford? Actually, I was, yes, because uh, this winter... He uh, signed a contract for two extra seasons and I was really like, yeah, he will not go anywhere in the Netherlands and which uh, team from out of the Netherlands would have him. That's so, right. Because, I mean, he, like I said, he hasn't been with you for very long. He's been with you for not even a year and a half. Yeah, that's exactly. And if, before that, he was in the amateurs. That's right. So he was managing an amateur team. I mean, he, he got them three successive promotions. Yes. But, so he was with you for 18 months. But in that 18 months, he bought you a fair amount of success, didn't he? Well, he, he did really, yes. Because first he got us from... When he came in, we were seventh. And, well, it was decent, but not really good. And then after that, he came and uh, we played really good. We began to win games and we ended third. Then we got into playoffs for relegation and we went up. And this season was really good football and we even got to the half finals of the cup. Okay, you got was, so uh, so basically you're saying that he he was seventh when you he arrived at your club in the division yes. below, but he yes. actually managed to get you into the playoffs and this season you got to the semi final of the cup. So you're almost in the cup final as well. And I'm just yes. interested, so, so what kind of football do you play? Because we've got no idea. Depends also on the on the team you're playing against but it's more like 4-3-3 uh, e even a bit attacking even for uh, a low team like us we're playing pretty attacking and uh, I think it's pretty attractive football what we play all right and, and and the things that you say depends on the team that you play so does he change his tactics depending on the team does he change his team around as well or does it yeah. you know is it all crazy? yeah not really too much need not too much once he did and it was really bad, so he went back to the normal system and we uh, got a tie, so that says a lot. And I think it's really a, a trainer which can uh, build a team, not individuals, but really a team. They're all, they will accept what their role is and they'll fight for their chance. He wasn't with you for very long, so you describe him as your most successful manager. Yes. Well, for now it is, yes. And what kind of manager is he? I mean, is he, a, is he a people person? Is he a disciplinarian? You know, does he bring up the players? And Does he make bad players good? Does he sort of nurture them? What kind, you know, what is, his, what is his background? Yeah, well, he is really indeed a trainer which, or a coach which can make a, a player 
uh, that was uh, I don't know if you know Luigi Bruns, but he was he plays now for us. And before he went, he went really bad at other clubs, and he came back to us, and now he plays really good. Okay. And so he can really make uh, those broken players. So that's how you can call them. Yeah. He can make them better, and even within a team. And what do you think are his biggest strengths as a manager? Uh, I think, yeah, well, people manager, he can make b- bad players or not so good players play for the team and not f- only for themselves. He's not uh, someone who would keep a star player, well, someone who get, pays a lot. He can, He's willing to take him out if he plays bad. And was he liked by the fans as well? Is he a people person? Yes, 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 yes. We love him. We yeah. love him. Okay. And yeah. what's his biggest weaknesses as well, do you think, as a manager, though? Because he must have some, some downfall, some things that... Uh, I, I, think, I think it's the inexperience. Which is, I mean, you, inexperience which you can only build over time, I suppose, yes. by becoming yes. a manager. So I, and, I, I th- and for me, uh, a manager is someone who also ha- needs to have experience. That's the whole thing you learn. He also, when he was uh, not a trainer at us, he was also attending a training at uh, Ajax and Feyenoord. He was looking there what the, their managers were doing. So he's really investing I- okay. investing in himself. Okay. So that's a good thing about him. And I'm going to ask you, I mean, obviously, Marinus is coming to Brentford. Do you think that he'll be a good fit for Brentford? I think that's a, that's a hard question. I, I think he is because, like you said, there are a lot of things that are in common with Brentford and Excelsior. He is... He is Really open-minded about uh, new things. I saw on the internet that you were in the Moneyball thing, so I think he is open-minded for that too. I I think he's good for that. Things are sounding exciting for us. It's obviously (laughs) a new era for you as well because you need to go out and find yourself a new manager, but fingers crossed that goes well. And you never know, you might catch a little posse of Brentford fans coming over to Excelsior this season to check out your football and check out one of the local derbies or something. Yeah, that would be really nice. Yeah. And, and we are also thinking about going to Brentford this season. <laughs> okay, well, listen, if, you're gonna, if there's anywhere to come, we've got lots of Dutch bees that actually come down. I'll hook you up with them. You could all fly down together because they have a great time when they come down. Okay. Sounds nice. Wicked, Sounds man. Nice. Renzo, it's been great speaking to you and I'll catch up with you later, man. Okay, thank you. Getting a little bit more information on our new manager, Marinus Dijkhausen. We're going to chat to Jeroen Verstappen from Rotterdam. He's a massive Excelsior season ticket holder. He's been a season ticket holder for over 17 years. Goes home and away. He knows everything about that team. He's right in there. Jeroen, how you doing, mate? Pretty, uh, pretty good. Pretty good. That's cool, man. I'm, I'm a bit gutted, obviously, that your manager has now been nabbed by a small club in West London, I bet. Yeah, kind of pissed over that because... Uh... <laughs> From all the players or from all the staff that could leave here, I, I would, well, let's say, at least expect it for him to leave. That's but of course, I wish him the best and uh, he deserves it. Of course. I mean, a lot, we've spoken to a few fans now and everyone seems very fond of Marinus. I mean, tell us a little bit more about Marinus. Well, I think he's a pretty down to earth guy and he really fits into uh, to the club uh, that we have. He's down to earth. His comments are really straightforward. He never makes a big fuzz or a big mess of things it's well it's basically what you see is what you get and that's the thing that i really like in him as a coach and his playing style i mean what's his style of football he plays from a very good organization uh starts with uh with the line in the back um he has a good organization plays from the organization he gives the players trust i believe so that defenders know what they need to do and it's very easy to play for like the midfielders and the strikers and I think everybody, uh, you see him like coaching for like one and a half year, everybody knows exactly what to do and which position they need to take. So I would definitely say that he, he started with um, with the last line of the front, uh, with the defence and then basically build up from that. And, and it builds up confidence. And I mean, obviously, we know about this about Excelsior. There's similarities between Brentford because Brentford are a very small club in uh, West London. You're a very small club in Rotterdam. I mean, our budgets are... Probably a bit bigger than yours. I mean, you tell me what your budgets were, which are completely yeah. ridiculous. I mean, you said to me it's four million euros, and yeah. uh, that's for everything for the whole running of the club, for the players, the staff, you know, the electricity, the floodlights, everything. The guy that drives people around is four million euros. So you managed to stay in, in the Eredivisie last season, which is the Dutch Premier League, the top league in, in Holland, for four million euros. That's that's pretty amazing. Yeah. 
Yeah, indeed. Well, basically over the last 10 years, we played in that division for five years. We went up, we went down, but we basically did it the same from the same budget. Uh, already five, well, let's say five seasons in the, in the top league now. So that's well, pretty impressive. With that kind of budget, I mean, you can't be going out and buying and competing against the players like teams like PSV and Ajax are going to be pulling in. So, you know, you must be going around and finding players under stones and finding rough jewels and getting them up there. So it was one of the things that Marinus was good at, at finding players who are, you know, pretty unfashionable that couldn't get in the big sides and getting them up to a certain level. Yeah, definitely. I think that is next to who's been a good coach. I think he, he put um, the complete team to a whole level. Okay. I really, really believe that he put so many trust into, uh, into the players uh, next to, I think that the, the culture that we have as a as a club is like a, a warm bath where you come in. But also, I think he really, really um, made made all the players better. Uh, we 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 purchased a striker this uh, this season, and he had a lot of injuries at his uh, previous his, team. What was his name? Uh, from from Weert, and uh, he scored thirteen. For a small team as us, it, it, that's pretty good. Uh, imagine what he uh, what he would do if like uh, get all the assists from players like uh, from PSV and from Ajax. He would, could maybe double that. Do you think that? I mean, obviously he's come to Brentford now, but if he had stayed with you for another season, because you stayed up, you just got just above the you know just above the playoff zone, yeah, because you got you know points. you got playoffs in a relegation playoff, and you finished above there, but you finished above there by four points, which is good enough. But do you think that if he'd stayed there for another season, you could have actually consolidated and maybe got a more of a mid-table position in the Eredivisie? Yeah, definitely. Um, well, uh, um, we, we had so many games where... I think if, if, if we skipped the last, well, let's say, two minutes of each game, we would have had like 10 or 15 points more. Okay, so you were conceding late goals quite, quite, quite a lot in your game. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, I mean, is that? Do you think is that a weakness of the team? Do you think that's a weakness in his coaching? Well, basically, I'm on. I, w- I would say he made some change, some fun, some funny changes, like in one or two matches. But well, that's a personal opinion, and even if he did so, that's well, that, that can happen. Oh well, yeah, I think it's a small team luck, right? You you might run into to yellow cards easier. You right, you you run into red cards a little bit easier, and you know the the last minutes always take a little bit longer against the long teams. That might be a bit sour that I'm saying this, but well, I guess that's how it is. Marinus, it's coming to Brentford. What do you think he's going to be able to bring to our team, and do you think he's going to be good for Brentford? Well, I think he's just a he's a, he's a good guy. Um, that that's m- most important. Uh, I think every 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 club would be happy to have such a such a such a coach as him, just a down to earth, down to earth guy. And I think he put can put a lot of confidence in, into all the, the the players, and he could really make a good team out of them in just a, in just a short time. I think that's one of the best the best things. And I, I don't know how big his network is because I know he played in Scotland. Or, That's right, Dunfermline, yeah. or the Fifers, as we call them, and we have a, a, a Falkirk branch of the Brentford Supporters Club, and Falkirk and Dunfermline absolutely hate each other, so I'm not sure what's going down with the Falkirk Supporters Club, the fact that we've actually got a Fifer as our manager now, I think there's lots of uh, debates happening up north of the border now, but we'll have to calm them down, but yes, he did play up in Scotland. Well, I think the difference is that the role that he's got is that his job isn't really to bring in any players. I mean, he could recommend them and he could bring them in, but the, the, that main role will be of the sporting directors. Now, we've got, a, we've got a structure which we've put into place, which means that somebody else is going to be more responsible bringing in players. And of course, he can suggest them and bring them into the loop, but it's not going to be his main role. His main role is going to be coaching and getting the team to play the football to get us out of the championship into the Premier League. You think that will suit him? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Uh, he's, he's quite ambitious. I can imagine that. So, And, and as for yourself, because obviously you're looking for a new manager. I mean, this is bad news for you, but also it's good news because it's a new horizon for Excelsior. Well, yes, it's, it's, it's a new start. We have to build up from, uh, from scratch. But, um, of course, the, uh, we're going gonna, to gonna sell him. So uh, he, he brings some money in uh, for, uh, for a team. And as you said before, uh, we only got four millions to, uh, to spend. So every money that we get extra is, uh, is good. You'll be looking forward to spending your money, getting a new coach. We've got your coach. And like I said, we've now got a little link up between Brentford and Excelsior. Well, yeah, let's, uh, well, let's, uh, well, I'm still kind of sad that he leaves, but, uh, but still, uh, yeah, 
I wish him all the best. Right, and I wish you all the best as well, Haroon. It's been great chatting to you and getting a little bit of vibe of what's going down in Excelsior and with the new manager, Marinus Dijkhausen. And I'll catch up with you soon. Yeah, pretty, uh, most welcome. Uh, I really enjoyed it. And uh, take good care of Marinus because, uh, well, he's a special guy, I guess. Thank you. So everyone's talking statistical modelling for Brentford. Even though, to be fair, we've been using statistical modelling and using stats for years now, but it seems to be the in thing to talk about. So because it's in thing and we've got a new manager from Holland, we thought we'd go to Holland to go and speak to the Excelsior Stato, Mr. Dylan Metzelaar from Rotterdam. Dylan, how are you doing? I'm fine. Thank you. That's cool, man. Listen, you you got figures coming out of your ears about this Excelsior, about Marinus Dijkhausen, about, you know, the, the Eredivisie and everything like that, haven't you? Yes, I have, uh, I have it all for you. Which is interesting because, I mean, your team, Excelsior, you're a big season ticket holder. You've been supporting them for years as well. Did really well last season because they're a minuscule team and everyone thought they'd go down. And uh, they didn't. They stayed up after getting promoted. But interesting because obviously Marinus has come to us and one of the things that people have flagged up and people had to sort of, you know, raise their eyebrows a little bit is the stats that he had in the Eredivisie last season, 1-6, drew 14, lost 14, scored 47 and conceded 43. And you finished just above the relegation playoff zone. A lot of people are saying, mm, those stats aren't that great, but you're going to tell us something different, aren't you? Yes, I uh, can. What you say, uh, he won only six games this season. I understand when you say that it, that it isn't uh, that high, but for Excelsior, it is a lot of... Uh, winning this season and also a lot of draws with 14 the highest from the last years for Excelsior they never had so many draws in one season uh, this season Excelsior uh, had uh, 32 points and in only 7 of the 80 season before Excelsior earned more points in one season so you can understand that, that this was a very good season for Excelsior because everyone thought Excelsior had no chance and would relegate with one, maybe two win winnings. But Excelsior played different and they surprised everyone in the Netherlands. And the last years, Excelsior, when they played in the Eredivisie, they always uh, stays on the 16, 17 or 18th place. And this season, for the first time in years, the lowest position of Excelsior was the 15th place. And that is nice for a club with uh, like Excelsior. And it resulted in avoiding relegation for the first time in history without playing the playoffs. So, under Marinus Dijkhuizen, Excelsior had a lot of records this season. Which is very good news for you. And, I mean, talking about the stats, obviously, you know, the stats for this season, the previous season, obviously, is very successful because he picked up Excelsior from being out of the playoff zone and possibly not getting promoted. And, and he did something, didn't he, when he took over in January? Yes. In January last year, he came to Excelsior. The head coach uh, then was uh, John Dow Thomason. Uh, on the Thomason, Excelsior earned uh, on average 1.4 points in a game. And when Dijkhuizen came, he won uh, in the last half year of that season 10 games, draw three, lost uh, also three. And that brings us to, uh, to an average points of 2.4 per game. And that is uh, very high. Excelsior was the number seven when Dijkhuizen became head coach of Excelsior in January. And then a half year later, Excelsior rose up to the third place. And then they became, they could play in the playoffs to promote to the Eredivisie. First, they defeated FC Den Bosch. They played also in the first division that season. And then the opponent was RKC Waalwijk. RKC Waalwijk played in the Eredivisie. And Excelsior surprised. Just like this season, everyone in the Netherlands, by defeating Ekkerswijk at home with 2-0 and away a draw of 2-2. And by that result, Excelsior promoted to the Eredivisie. And no one expected it because the season, therefore, the first division had 16 clubs and Excelsior ended on the 15th place. So no one had any expectation for, the, for the, the last season. But Excelsior did it and they promoted to the Eredivisie. And just like this season, no one gave Excelsior a chance to do that. And on the Dijkhuizen, it was very better than on the Thomason. 
There was more attack in football. Excelsior scored almost one more goal per game than in the half year before with Thomasson on the head. Some people may argue that, you know, he's done really great and he's come in. It's only been one season, though, or a season and a half. I mean, OK, he had one whole season in the Eredivisie and he also had half a season in the in the division below. He's still relatively inexperienced. So, you know, you still can't get a really good idea of, of how good a coach he is, or can you? But what he postated with Excelsior the last uh, one and a half year, it it became better each month. Each game, it, it was better. So I think that Dijkhuizen can do more better than you do now because it he didn't go backwards it always go further just interestingly you know what what are the positive things that he brings to to the to, to your game i'm just interested to to see that because obviously you've seen the change between the previous coach and now this season tom van weert became the club top scorer while he did not play for almost one and a half year because of an injury no other club could take the risk with uh, tom van weert while everyone was thinking he take he was taking risk. I'm not talking about Dijkhuizen. He knew, he knew what he was doing. So we do not need a lot of money for good new players. Excelsior have limited resources. They don't have a lot of money to spend for the new players. So okay. the budget last season was 4.1 million uh, euros. And that's not a lot when you look at the other clubs like number one PSV at a budget of 63 million. So number two Ajax. At the highest budget of 65 million. Okay. And number 16, Nak Breda, had a budget that was more than three times higher than Excelsior had. They ended lower than Excelsior. And the style of football that he plays, I'm just interested. And, in, you know, Brentford plays free tacking, attacking football, you know, down the wings. You know, we just play it, pass the ball about a lot. Obviously, he must be similar to that because we wouldn't have chosen him as a coach if we didn't play that kind of football. Under Dijkhuizen, they played much more attacking football than therefore. And it's also on the wings with Botaka, especially. And when Excelsior is attacking, the defenders also go forward and do not stay in a defensive zone. And that led to more threat and more goals. So you, when you look at the goal scorers from Excelsior, there are also some defenders which has scored some goals. There's obviously got to be things we need to watch out for because he's a, he's a young manager. He's still learning. So there must be parts of his game which, you know, you still question. I mean, you know, maybe there's mistakes that he's made or maybe there's an areas that he's not so good at. What do you what do you think? Yeah, Excelsior lost a lot of games this season in the last 50 minutes. For example, when every game was during 75 minutes, Excelsior would end on a sixth place in the Eredivisie. <laughs> Sometimes he substitutes on a defensive way by substituting a defender for an attacker. And after that moment, Excelsior do not attack anymore, but it's the strength of the team and the game will, will be lost. This season, four games on a row, Excelsior lost the game in the extra time. So you, so basically you're saying that you go for the kill. So you, instead of defending a lead, you'll go out and attack the lead in the, in the last minute. Yeah. Okay, which is quite similar to what Brentford have done, but we're quite different because we actually normally score goals in the last, I think maybe 22, 24 goals of us came in the last, 80, like the last 10 minutes of the game. Yeah, that's a lot of difference with Excelsior. Okay, well, you know, well, hopefully he can turn that around and and bring that to 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 the game at Brentford and keep us scoring in the last ten minutes. So, listen, end, ending it on a bit of a high. I mean, like I said, Excelsior next division. Do you still think that you're going to stay where you are in their Eredivisie? Yeah, without Marinis Dijkhuizen, it is another season than this year with another head coach. I think they are going to play other football. I'm going to miss Dijkhuizen a lot when he goes to Brentford, because he is able to reach unexpected performance. He had less experience when he came to Excelsior, but in six months he led Excelsior to the Eredivisie. And this season he surprised everyone in the Netherlands with avoiding relegation and reaching the semi-finals of the cup for the first time in 40 years. And he know how it is to celebrate a promotion. He is ready to go on and led Brentford to the Premier League. So you think that Mr... Dijkhausen is going to take Brentford to another level. Yeah, I think he's ready for it. Okay, well that's that's good news for us anyway, listen. But listen, Dylan, it's been fantastic talking to you and good luck for Excelsior next season. I hope you find your new coach. I hope you stay up in the Eredivisie and hopefully we'll come down and see you sometime next season maybe. Yeah, maybe in the Europa League. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you <laughs> know that one. Great. Yeah. All right, wicked man. Talk to you later. So that's what the Excelsior fans had to say about Marinus Dijkhausen. Also check another 
besotted podcast from Sherd Masu. He's a football writer for Algemeen Dagblad Daily. They're the second biggest daily paper in Holland and he's got a lot of knowledge about Marinus Dijkhausen on the Besotted podcast on this same channel. Yeah.